what are the most important aspects, of, in your opinion, uh, concerning performative learning and teaching? I think it's a helpful term <clears throat> to draw in and galvanize some of the important things we know about teaching and learning. That it's not a passive process. It's got to be active. Um, that it's got to engage the whole person and not just the brain. Um, that it's got to be dynamic. And I think we have a lot of terms, as I said in my talk, that try to capture what contemporary teaching and learning should look like. Mm -hmm. But there's, I think there's something helpful about the term performative. Um, because it, it draws in, as I try to illustrate, from so many theoretical fields. You listened into a couple of presentations. And yes, I did. Yeah, tell me about them. What struck you as interesting or...? Oh, they were, they were all interesting. <clears throat> this morning's um, uh, workshop that I went to was very interesting because the two workshop leaders obviously were very familiar with drama techniques but they chose to focus more on activities that encouraged the, the future teachers, or us as teachers, to take note of the individuals in the classroom and what they bring to bear as people. So we did some quite straightforward practical activities to do with ourselves, mm -hmm. the feeling of bringing ourselves, our age, our backgrounds, our, to the room and I think when you do something actively of course when I describe that it sounds well that's a very obvious thing to say but when you experience it you learn it at a deeper level mm -hmm. that was one another workshop was <clears throat> a colleague from Japan again who presented um, quite a, a, a simple and I don't mean that in a derogatory technique at all quite the contrary technique for reading aloud texts mm -hmm. and sort of performing them uh, to a certain degree for Japanese learners of English. And I thought what was very um, interesting about his contribution is that the importance of the context came across very clearly to me, that this activity was particularly valuable, not wanting to stereotype nationalities, obviously, but it was particularly important for the learners that he happened to be. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We had a very invigorating um, workshop that was a performative lecture that was very challenging. Was that the gang? That was um, Kirsten, oh. who, who presented a per performance mm -hmm. as a lecture. And it was, as somebody made the um, parallel with sort of watching Waiting for Godot. <laughs> that it was intriguing uh, and thought-provoking. And then uh, Warren, a colleague from Singapore, did a very interesting presentation about language. Um, and it got us into the territory of performance management, mm -hmm. um, performance management in universities, and the endless bureaucracy of filling in self-evaluation questionnaires and so on, okay. uh, which was very um, provocative as well. So it was really interesting. And talking to people at the breaks, I think the quality of person and thinking mm -hmm. is very high. Do you conference. perceive cultural differences in regards to uh, thinking about teaching and learning? Um, le less so in a cultural, in the sense of national culture. Mm -hmm. When I use the term culture, <clears throat> I tend to use it more broadly than specifically national culture. I know there are certain sort of stereotype views about, I mean, if we go to an extreme China, you know, Asian culture and so on and approaches to learning. I think with globalization and interaction and the internet and so on, some of those stereotypes are, are being eroded. We've, I mean, we've got as formal and passive teaching and learning going on in the UK as in any part of the world, in some quarters. 
Can you identify any areas where future research should be concentrated on in terms of uh, performative teaching and learning? Well, of course, to do research on it, you'd have to pin it down, <laughs> which, which isn't what I'm interested in doing at this stage. But you'd have to pin it down. You'd have to create a specific construct that... But we, as researchers, I think we've got to take on the challenge of the call for evidence-based practice. Um, and we've not got to be too dismissive of so-called scientific approaches, mm -hmm. as complex as it is. To, I mean, what you don't want is simplistic research that's looking for evidence bases that flattens everything and simplifies everything. But I, I think we need to meet the challenge because these days, nobody said it yet. I might have said it this morning um, when I was in my it's not all rosy out there <laughs> mode. But the question politicians are going to ask is, prove it. Mm. <laughs> you know, you want to do this, show me the evidence. Uh, we're not going to go backwards and not meet mm. that challenge, I think. No, that's not going to go away, so we've, we've got to. Um... And um, I, I'm not very fond of the traditional school system or yeah. in traditional ways of learning by any no. means, but I wonder if we say that learning is really all that individualistic and dynamic and always uh, context related, how big must the curriculum be that encompasses all, all of that? Or asked in another way, are there any minimum things we can even agree on that should be included in an education nowadays? Well, I think, um, <clears throat> I think the curriculum content is, if you like, another story. You know, I think the curriculum content, um, which in the UK tends to be laid down by the national curriculum, is fine. I think the emphasis on this conference is we've got the content. What's the best way to ensure that children learn? And at the end of my talk, I was trying to emphasize classroom culture rather than simple methodology. Because I have seen, I didn't have time to use this example with people, but I have seen examples of where methodology, progressive methodology, sort of goes wrong. And it, it, it with the emphasis on culture, you're not saying don't do this, do this. So an emphasis on classroom culture makes room for so-called traditional approaches as well. I don't know if that makes sense to you. You're not saying everything must be constantly done in groups, for example. I mean, I saw that example um, where teachers got hold of the idea that teaching poetry, that the teacher must never intervene, and the progressive way of teaching a poem is get classes of children into groups, give them the poem so that they discuss it. And if you choose the wrong poem to do that, they get nowhere. They go round in circles. You, teaching is taking people on a journey from where they were to where they need to be. And progressive education, when it went wrong, sometimes left them where they were. So I, what I hope about a more sophisticated view, and sometimes a helpful no, new idea makes us more sophisticated in our thinking mm -hmm. isn't polarizing simple traditional and progressive ideas about education. It's a false polarity. Mm 